Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we're going to be discussing the slave that won his freedom because of his work as a spy for the Continental Army. Today's founder is James Armiston. Now as I said, James Armiston was a slave in Virginia when the war broke out, and by 1781, the Continental Army was desperate, and they really didn't want to take in slaves to fight, especially from the South. But... Times were tough, and they needed bodies. So James Armistead found this out, and he asked his master, William Armistead, if he could go fight for the Patriots. And William himself was a Patriot, and he said, yeah, absolutely. So off James goes, and he joins the Continental Army, and he ends up working for uh, the Marquis de Lafayette. Now, the Marquis de Lafayette uh, never liked slavery. He came to America and saw what was going on, and was like, this is, no, this is crazy. What are you doing here? Um... So he quickly recognized James's potential as not just a soldier, but as a mind, his, his brain and his, 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 his full capabilities. So he started training James in the ways of espionage. He taught him how to be a spy and he sent him off to join the British army. Now, as opposed to the Americans, the British army was very much taking in uh, slaves. They were saying, if you come fight for us, you'll just be free. So when a slave showed up saying, I want to fight for you, they were not surprised. They took him in. Now, now he began working for the recently treasoned Benedict Arnold. Apparently the British thought it would be funny to have this great traitor leading slaves who are now fighting against their masters. <laughs> it is kind of funny. <laughs> but um, uh, what's not funny is how good James Armiston was at being a spy uh, because he earned his way up to become an aide to Benedict Arnold, which you know, we talk a lot of trash about Benedict Arnold, but... It does speak a lot about him, much like the Marquis de Lafayette, to recognize the potential in someone despite their skin color. So what Arnold does is actually hires uh, James Armistead to be a spy against the Americans. So technically, James Armistead becomes a double agent. He is spying on the British for the Continental Army, and he's spying on the Continental Army for the British. The difference is, he was giving the Continental Army the correct information, and he was giving the British the wrong information. But for some reason, he still makes his way up and goes past Arnold and actually becomes an aide and a spy to General Cornwallis, who was leading the British Army's southern department and would famously be leading the British Army at Yorktown. But he lost at Yorktown, and one of the main reasons Cornwallis and the British lost at Yorktown is James Armistead got Lafayette information about troop movements that uh, on the British behalf that led pretty much directly to the French naval blockade that trapped them there and really was essential to the American victory at Yorktown. This one slave who was a double agent and apparently really good at it and we win the war! Yay! And then, James Armiston goes back home and is a slave again. Which, the really astonishing thing about that fact is that if he had just gone and fought with the British in the first place, or if he gave the British the right information and the Continental Army the wrong information, the British would have liberated him. But apparently, he heard all these talk, this talk of liberty and the potential that Americans were supposed to have. And he fought for that idea. And he went back to be a slave because, I suppose, he thought he'd be liberated one day. And it turned out he was, but it wasn't that easy. Because he went to his master, William Armistead, and said, I'd like to be free now, please. And William Armistead said, okay, except at the time, it was illegal in Virginia to free your slaves. Now, times were changing, because just about 15 years later, George Washington would famously, when he died, free all his slaves after Martha's death. Um, but at that time, he couldn't. So slaves who fought for the Continental Army could petition the state of Virginia for their freedom. But they had to have fought as soldiers. And James Armistead never fought as a soldier. He went right to being a spy. And that is a technicality. Sounds like a crappy technicality. It is but it was a technicality. Fortunately, he had worked with one Marquis de Lafayette, who was one of the most respected generals in the Continental Army. So when word got back to Lafayette that they were not even considering 
Armistead's petition, he wrote on his behalf, yes, James Armistead deserves to be manumitted. If anyone, I mean, everyone deserved to be manumitted, but if anyone in particular deserved it, it was this man and the work he did for me, Marquis de Lafayette, during our service to our country. And because of that, in 1787, the state of Virginia does grant James Armistead his freedom. And in thanks to this man who helped him so generously, James Armistead changes his name to James Armistead Lafayette. And then Lafayette goes back to France. And he does a bunch of French things. And he's in the French Revolution, becomes a major figure in European politics in the early 19th century. James Armistead, he starts a farm. Because what is he going to do? But he turns it into a nice plantation. And this is going to sound crazy, but James Armistead, to work on his plantation, as plantation owners in Virginia did, purchased and owned several slaves throughout his life. Which speaks to the idea that, yes, of course, only black people were uh, uh, kept as slaves, but no matter who you were, if you wanted to get ahead, you needed to buy some slaves, because that's just how so society operated. It wasn't the same kind of racism we have today. Although I don't want to get off on that tangent, we can discuss that another time. However, 40 years go by, and, you know, James Armistead just has this plantation, does pretty well for himself, and then the Marquis de Lafayette comes back to America on his famous victory tour where he goes to every state, and in every city he's in, people throw parades and have parties. It's him. It's, 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 it's the adopted son of George Washington. It's the French-American Revolutionary. He's come to say goodbye. And early on in this tour, he try, he goes through Richmond, excuse me, Richmond, Virginia. And while he's going through Richmond, of course, he's in the middle of a parade because, you know, he was getting parades everywhere he went. And he's going, and he looks out into the crowd, and, in, you know, out in the crowd, he sees a face, and he knows that face. And he stops the parade, and there's hundreds, if not thousands of people there, like, what? Why is he stopping the parade? He stops the parade, he gets up and he gets off his float, and he pushes his way through a crowd. Because he saw James Armistead, a man, I'm sorry, James Armistead Lafayette, a man he had not seen in 40 years. James, who had gone to the parade thinking, hey, I'm going to see Marquis. He granted me my freedom. I named myself after him because of what he did for me. But I'm just going to stand in the crowd. He won't remember me. But no, Lafayette gets off his float, and pushes his way through the crowd, and they embrace. And it's an unbelievable moment in American history. It's, it's in a fashion, I've given my opinion before, that I believe this victory tour is the end of the American Revolution, because people could literally say goodbye to it. And the, the people there that day saw, uh, they saw something that, that no one else saw. You, you, you don't, you don't, it's not even that you don't see it every day, you never see it. They saw a man born on one side of the ocean to disgusting riches and a man born over in America with zero, a slave, that had come together and won a war for freedom. And while not every slave got their freedom, we know that, unfortunately, these two men did get their freedom. And they, if you were there that day, you would get to see these two these two brothers who hadn't seen each other in decades and decades embrace one last time and say goodbye. And it's one of my favorite stories of the revolution. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please hit like. Uh, if you didn't, please hit like anyway. <laughs> if you, and take your cold heart elsewhere. Um, if you, uh, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I do these five days a week. You know that. Check out my Patreon page. Link in the thing below. Uh, and this Saturday at 2 o'clock, I'm going to do a live stream talking about the articles that I've written in the past seven days. So I really hope you come chit-chat with me about that. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to giving you another video tomorrow.